Hello. Good morning, everyone. Hey, got uh, an elephant and Kate. Kate is at a Comic Con. What is she doing online? What is she doing? She's supposed to be meeting the men and women of her dreams today uh, in Gal Godot and Henry Cavill. PK in the house. Crispy. These guys do not sleep. Hey, Will Broussard. What's going on? Good morning, guys. Hello, superhero swimmer. All I see is a blank screen and weird man sounds. <laughs> weird man sounds. I'm glad that my sounds sound manly. Thank you. That seems like a compliment. For some reason, my email client seems to crash every time I open a file. So I'm trying to figure out a way to make this happen for all of us. So I'm going to try it, do a workaround and just grab a file and drag it in there. Old school. Hey, that worked. There's one. There's two. And there's three. And this particular person that I'm going to be critiquing sent in some new files. So let's see if the person learned or improved from the first submission to the most recent. Uh, honestly, that's a really good sign that things are moving the right way if someone is actively working on their art, regardless of whether they were getting feedback or not. Okay, so, and it looks like, what's going on? It says, copying zero items to untitled folder two. Oh, please, do not do me like this. All right, let's try this. Let's... I, I kind of cheaped out on this computer. I figure, oh, I just got a Mac Mini for my home drawing Cintiq needs because I don't use it that often. But um, okay, it looked like it worked. There's one page loaded in. I'm going to see if I can drag the others in. Oh, that looks good. Looks like it's... Oh, hmm. Looks like only one other. What the heck? Okay. What did this person do? Okay. This is very odd. All right, it loaded all the pages into one image and layered them. What is going on? That is not what I wanted to happen. I've never seen that happen. These these files that the person sent are they're JPEGs, but they're behaving rather oddly and that things don't normally work like this. Let me, um, I've only worked with Photoshop for like, ever since it was created, I've never had this ever happen before. So you guys continually seem to, um, what kind of file is this? It says it's a JPEG, but it's acting very odd. This smart object must be rasterized before proceeding Procedure, <laughs> proceeding. Edit contents will no longer be available. Rasterize the smart image. Why is it a smart object? Why are you sending me smart objects? Just send me a JPEG. It doesn't have to be smart. You don't have to impress me. Garg. Seriously. All right. Let's try this again. It's not going to let me even delete these files. All right. I'm going to delete the select the layers and get rid of this. Gotta free up this thing. All right, let's try this again. What is it? 
these things are titled DC Talent Search. Hodgepodge script 01. I'm just going to go 1. Okay, I'll go. Interesting. It's not liking that. Alright, I'm just going to drag one over at a time. Okay. Send me the dumb ones. Alright, Mouthy Mark 49. Hello. Did I miss you guys? Of course. Just rasterize. Yeah, why though? Why? Why? It's it's slowing down this computer. All right, I'm gonna have to basically. I'm I'm the kind of person that if there's a problem, I like to fix it right away. So this Mac Mini, adios, amigo. All right, it's out of here. I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna replace it with. I'm thinking I have an extra PC over there. I might go PC on this. Anyway, all right. How's everyone doing? I miss you guys. I've been gone for a week. I went skiing with my family, um, but I am back. It is 10.17 a.m. California. We're going to attack this work here. This is by uh, a sub-25, um, Clark Prince, I believe is his name, or Prince Clark. I closed the mail client just because um, is Clark Prince here. I bought a new PC for gaming, and then the one to replace I'll bring over here. A smart object you can patch in different layers without touching original. Yeah, but I see I grabbed all those files, brought them over to Adobe Photoshop. Normally it opens them up as separate files. It decided to lump all the files into one file layered on top of each other, which I don't really need. Anyway, um, thanks for the resub, Grimes Jr., So let's see what, what's going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, cool. Crispy, I need to work on my art. I've been playing too many right. video games. You have. Cool. All right. Okay, so um, let me just say for this work, this was pretty good. And like I said, this person sent in some more recent submissions, which I'll get into. And you can see that the work already improved, not just in terms of the line quality, um, but uh, the actual drawing itself, which was good to see. So... Um, let me just pull up a bunch of these different images. Let's see if I just pull up one more, whether it likes to. Uh, why, 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 why? I'm not enjoying this. I might have to. What I'm going to do. I'll have to do it one at a time. Fine. All right. We will get through this. Page one. It looks like two characters. If I had a guess, I was going to say Lois and Clark, but there's no so uh, no glasses on the character. So one, panel one, a little unclear in that I don't know. Is this my, is my cursor showing here? It should be. So I'll make sure. Is the cursor showing? Yeah, it's not a Twitch stream without some technical difficulties. There's always something. Oh, okay. All right, here he go. Hold on one second. I did not bring my phone. One second, guys. So 
So Kira Hiko is at uh, Ace Comic Con. She's our mod. And uh, she's waiting in line to meet Henry Cavill, I believe. I think if I've read, read that correctly. So that's how that's how difficult it is to mod one of these channels. You can do it while you're waiting. No, she, no. she does a lot of work behind the scenes. You guys don't know it. Um, but she's, um, both she and Renee um, are amazing in that uh, they selflessly volunteer a lot of their time to make sure this channel as good as can be. One second, guys. One second, guy. All right. Okay. Oh, who, uh, yeah, who got tickets to San Diego Comic Con? I believe they won on sale today. All my friends didn't get tickets for San Diego. Again, what con would you recommend, Jim? I think um, WonderCon. If you're a sub and are can make it to WonderCon, I think we're going to have like a sub meetup uh, at the show itself. Uh, maybe grab some food or something like that. That that con is in Anaheim. It is in March or April this year. Just Google it. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's get back to the art here. We have, did anyone confirm if you can see the uh, cursor or not? I believe there is a way to make it appear. I did it last time. I don't know if I have to toggle it on every single time or not, but. Okay, so so this is art by uh, Clark Prince. And um, the storytelling is, is good. I think there are a couple things I would change about it uh, in that it's odd to start a panel with, start a scene with this panel, this panel, and that panel all at once. And uh, because there's not one panel clearly indicated at the far left, I don't know which one goes first. I, pre I mean, normally this would be one, this would be two, this is three. But why make me think and work about it? Go ahead and put this all flush here. If you need to put that one, put it here. So that's one, that's two with the hand, that's three. Very simple. Um, there's no need to put it all over at the same time. So you want to clearly establish the city. Um, honestly, it looks like the person, um, Clark, kind of ran out of steam with the backgrounds because he's got quite a bit of detailing over here. But then over here, it's, it's more uh, sketchy. Um, and I get the whole transition from detail to no detail, which because this has no detail back here. Um, okay, no cursor. Where's the cursor? Um, I'm going to have to guess it's in preferences. Preference cursor. Um... Why? Why? Um, why? <laughs> okay, I believe someone told me how to 
show, make the cursor show up in Twitter. All right, so it's important, I think, to realize that if you do um, have a drop off in in detail, you got to show it consistently to have it make sense. All right, hopefully that makes sense in and of itself. All right. Oh, the way for me to make it work is display capture, and I have it under application capture, so it's fine. I uh, I can make do. So I would definitely have kept this like the detail here, but I would add more here and kept that open back here. But even here, I feel it's a little too sketchy. Um, if you look here, you have a lot of lines that don't necessarily aren't parallel, which is fine. You're doing like rendering. But you can't render here and then do windows here, I think. It's inconsistent. It confuses me. So if you're going to go ahead and do windows like that here, all right, very orderly, uh, I, would, I, would, I would just cons consider um, uh, doing the same thing over here. I think you kind of had an impasse here when you came to this building. Uh, you didn't quite know what to do with it, unless it's going to be this kind of uh, elliptical building with no rendering whatsoever. But, you know, I think, again, you, you need to put some windows or some elements there. I like this angular building here. It's on its own, not perspective grid, but it's not everything's lined up. It doesn't have to be. Cities aren't designed that way. Um, so that's cool. But I think these buildings have to have rooftops like this more. And a lot of times when I freehand this, I'll draw the roof, rooftops first in perspective like this and figure out exactly when they turn sideways. All right. By that, I mean when we look at from this point of view and just ignore the fact that I'm drawing over this other panel, a rooftop would look like that, right? If there were buildings here in this foreground. Right? And, um, hold on a second. So, if you do that, Okay, you can then figure out when these rooftops basically start receding in perspective so that eventually they become flat lines and we basically get the side silhouette down there. Okay, does that make sense? And what I mean by side silhouette is that objects close to us, because we're above them, we'll see down upon them, but as they get further towards that horizon line, they become more of a silhouette. And that's... Um, you know, quick thing on perspective again. Mouthy Merc 49, thanks for the resub. Salami Express, you're my biggest celebrity crush. Male. Well, I'll take it. I don't know if I'm a celebrity, but I will take the crush worthy. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, I didn't get much sleep. Uh, okay, so here we go. Quickly, again, rooftop. Okay, these splay out, and as they get further away towards this mythical horizon line, okay, or if there were stepping stones, right? As they get closer to that horizon, they become more dashes, right? And then as they get closer to us, you see more of them. So if you do this, Okay, freehand, you can create um, a cityscape and make it look like they're in perspective. And now all these look like they're below that horizon line, so you can mix it up. Anything above that horizon line, you're not going to see the roof because it's above us. And in fact, you'll see these lines kind of angled this way. And then 
if you just draw Batman here. Alright. And if there's a bay, make it go like that. Pier. Smaller buildings here. So you can construct a city or drawing like uh, perspective drawing like this. Some of these buildings have a little more detail. They're not straight up and down. They're like um, cakes with multiple layers. And you kind of just build it slowly like that. Cityscape are dominoes. Eh? That's a good way of looking at it. So, um, okay. And then if you want, you can make it all uplit. Like this. And go ahead and make these top parts kind of shadowy. Shadowy. I think that's a that's an official art term. Just make the work more shadowy. I'm sorry, people. I will um, break out a more official art vocabulary book. You guys deserve more than art shadowy terms. That's so weak. I'm sorry. When I go on vacation, I must have dumped all the super important, useful artistic vocabulary knowledge out my head because I don't know what I'm talking about today. All right, so you can sort of see as I drop in these shadows, okay, and then you can render down. So this is a suggestion to um, Clark Prince that as you render down, it creates this um, visual trick, I'm trying to be careful of my terminology, of light coming from the street, right? And uh, creating a little more dramatic kind of feel to the cityscape, if this were Gotham City. And everything just kind of fades out as it goes below. All right. And then down here in the tenements, in the narrows, or the, yeah, I think the narrows is what they called it in the movies, and I think in, sometimes in the comics. They can't, these, these peasants, they can't afford electricity, so it's all dark. They have candle lights, and so... And then further back, you'll have less illumination from the, from the uh, ground below. So you can aff afford to go more of like a patchwork, a grid, crossword puzzle kind of effect with little bits of white kind of peeking out. Okay. And then some of these buildings have uh, like balconies that kind of jut out. Daredevil, Frank Miller style. Always so impressed with his architecture. The guy was such, he was fantastic at making things very simple, but he knew structure and architecture and design. Still does. Big influence. Street. Little 7 Eleven down here. A couple panhandlers. Street grid. Empty warehouse. Junkyard dog. Whatever. All right. All right. What's the next time you're playing on destroying people at PUBG? This week, probably evening. My guess is like Thursday evening. It's kind of a busy weekend for me. I've got um, a commitment tonight. And when I say commitment, I'm going to see the premiere of Star Wars. 
the next Star Wars. So that's like at six or seven o'clock tonight. Yeah, and then tomorrow morning I'll be sketching in the morning, delivering my um, review of the movie, and that's it for the weekend. But during the week, I think uh, Britt and Kelsey and I we're gonna jump back on and we'll probably stream. World of Warcraft, so for those of you guys that play and join on, we'll have a Discord channel where people can interact, hopefully, so we don't all have to type in channel, and then I'll probably um, do a PUBG session, I guess it's Thursday or Friday night. No spoilers, yeah, I will talk very, very, um, you know, if if Luke dies, I'll go like this, if Princess Leia dies, I'll go like this, so if you guys... Don't want spoilers. I'm not going to mention, but look out for this and this because it might be a very horrible, horrible uh, end for some of these characters. Star Wars. Can that be the sketch theme tomorrow? Sure. Why not? Um, yes, baseball signals. <laughs> no. I don't know if anyone dies, honestly. I have no idea. I'm just... I know nothing about the movie. I've not seen a single trailer... Um, because that's just the way I like to deal with movies that I know I'm going to see. What's the point if I, why, why spoil it? So, okay, so that's what I wanted uh, Clark to work on in terms of the detail. Or the the uh, $10 says Ray Loser's hand. I'll take on that bet. Anyway, so 10 real dollars, not Bitcoin, please, Renee. Real dollars, all right. Um, and wait. I have not seen any of the trailers. In the trailer, does she lose her hand? Do they suggest that? Because that was a sucker bet, if that's the case. Anyway, so so Clark, work on the background that way. Just tighten it up. Think of the rooftops. You already have the rooftops, but I think you could organize them better and have them kind of disappear and become flat lines as they move towards that horizon. So the, <clears throat> the panels that are after, I think, are really strong. I think the figure work, um, it's very kind of exaggerated in that it's they're lanky. Um, has kind of a slight Frank Quietly meets Seth Fisher uh, vibe to it, which I dig. Neil Gouge as well as another influence I could see. Um, but uh, just as long as you know that you're doing it, that's the key thing. Meaning if I draw something in the 90s and I drew people super wide, super buff, I knew I was doing that. I was exaggerating that feature and I do it less now. But it's important to know that when you do take artistic license with the human form that you're doing it intentionally and that you're not doing it because you can't, um, that you sort of have this blind spot to your style. But the, the, the perspective looks good. Um, you know, in this panel here, it's a little warped in that given how... Um, Quickly, this is receding into space. This does not look right. That looks flatter. So what I mean by that is the vanishing point is here. Okay, so the vanishing point is here. Things, mm, things are going to... All right, so all these pictures that are lined up need to recede or go more quickly into space backwards um, towards that vanishing point. You kind of had them, here, I'll blow it up here, All right? Unless the wall goes towards you and then rotates out, but there's no indication of that happening. So all these basically, just from a freehand sort of eyeballing perspective, have to all go closer and quicker towards that vanishing point, which is right about here. Okay, so you have those elements out of perspective, um, and it um, the trained eye can see it. I don't know if most people can tell or not, but every artist will, will point that out to you, I think. Okay, now when you go in and do the figure work, I like the faces, and I like the expressions, um, but you want to be careful that when you do this exaggerated, elongated form, um, that at least it's consistent, so... In panel one, um, you know, if you look at the length of this arm versus the length of this leg, mm, you know, this this leg this arm is probably 
60% of the length of the leg, which is probably a little on the short side. Again, artistic license styles and whatnot. Um, you know, you have this head length, roughly one, two, three, four, five, five and a half or so, uh, which is fine. But as long as you do it consistently, and by consistently, I say by the time you get to here, one head length, one, one and a half, two, three. So the arm has kind of shrunk down from one panel to the other, and I can see that. And again, I guess if you do that consistently all the time, it might work, but you just have to be careful that it's hard, uh, it's inconsistent to exaggerate it um, in in one spot and and not so much the other. And honestly, you could still carry that style of doing something that looks um, elongated and exaggerated and just by pulling it in a little bit and this is just a uh, oh, maybe that's a little too and this is just a liquify tool you know what I don't like this I'm going to do it a different way take this whole element and pull that in and then that way I don't deform anything we've drawn here so I've already moved it in from here to here here to here and those slight adjustments to me make it the style look a little more consistent from one to the other okay so that's the first page One second, while this loads, I'm gonna go ahead and get something to drink. Yeah, wow, what a page. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Um, Clark Prince is definitely someone that's applying himself and uh, doing a lot of work. Oh, Horde is the answer. Horde. So uh, I'll post those events up later today. So there'll be a WoW get-together, a uh, PUBG night this, this coming week. And um, we're going to start a Discord channel for the entire Twitch stream. And in the Discord channel will be information about... Uh, all the stuff that's going on, including the get the sub sub subscriber get together at WonderCon, and there's going to be a slight change also tomorrow uh, in the um, sketch giveaways. Honestly, I think I've been giving away too many. I, I've lost track of. I think I've. I think some have fallen through the cracks uh, in terms of being mailed out. Um, we've been pretty good about sending them all out timely, but I think there are a couple that are waiting for um, uh, postal payment. I think. Um, so we're going to slow that down. So even if there are three drawn, I think one will be given away free to different levels every week. Um, the others will be, uh, maybe be available for purchase within stream or one might go on eBay. I don't know. I have to figure it out so that, uh, um, I don't flood the market and, um, with free sketches and, um, but at the same time still give you guys a chance of getting something cool each and every week. And just not, it just might not be three or four sketches. Sorry. So and that kind of change in policy or whatever direction, that will be posted in the Discord channel. And that because there's one thing I don't think Twitch does well is there's no central re repository of communication other than these live streams. And it would be great to be able to put up a little essay or a comment that people check on a regular basis. I know I could put stuff in the channel feed, but I don't think people come and read that stuff. I, it rarely gets any comments or notations, um, and hopefully the Discord channel, because it'll be used on the gaming side and as a forum for uh, people to converse with one another, we'll have, sort of off Twitch, um, we'll have more views and um, more participation and more information will flow out to you guys. I feel odd posting it on Instagram or Twitter because I feel like people all there are going, well, why do I care what's happening on Twitch? I'm not on Twitch, like, stop you know, spamming with uh, me with all this other information. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to WonderCon. Jim B. Prepare to get a cuddle from a big hairy Scotsman. All right, guys, um, change of plans. I'm not going to be at WonderCon this year, but I just want to say thank you guys for coming to the show and supporting American Conventions. Uh, no, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> That's what I was going to put on. That should, You know, I should have not said anything, and the first thing I should have put on the Discord channel is, by the way, I'm not going to be at WonderCon. Just change of plans. All right, so this is the next page. It looks like there's something crazy happening in this city. It looks like it's being under attack. A Life in the Day is the um, title of the story. There's a guy in the foreground that looks slightly futuristic with, um, with an implanted uh, device. Um, there's a weird tangent here where uh, we see, um, I assume Lois looking up, and the, this thing looks like it's resting on her, on her face. I can't help but see it. And I'm not sure what that thing is there. It looks like there's a taxi cab here. Okay, that's driving sideways. I think you need that strut there to convince me it's a car. And this is another car behind it. I, I just drop it right there. That's all you need to do, I think. Otherwise, it's the, the contours of the car particularly right here, are such that it lines up just with the line of her brow and nose and looks like it's resting, like she's balancing it on her head. Okay. Um, so panel one, right here, uh, they're walking through the lobby. Panel two, they have exited and they see um, what's happening in panel three, which is the city being under attack. So it's pretty cool storytelling. I like what they're doing. I think... Um, uh, when you get to panel three, it could just be organized a little bit differently. Uh, I feel like this is Metropolis because there's this weird connection between buildings that's n nothing that we see in our reality. Um, but that's okay. Um, we know what a crosswalk or a floating crosswalk or a connector between two bridges is like. We see the main villain, I think, or one of the villains attacking here. I would say because we've already seen, I assume, Lois and Clark react here, that by the time we get to this panel, they would be a little more animated in their reaction because it looks like between panel two and three, nothing happened right, in terms of the reaction to what they're seeing. So I would change up what's happening. They, everyone in the foreground here looks a little too nonplussed by all the craziness that's that's happening um, in, panel, in the panel. So I, I feel like more chaos needs to be happening right here. I mean, this guy should be looking, you know, hold on, I'm doing black. You know, like this guy should be freaking out more. Actually, you know, I'm not going to, you know, like, like he's using his implant um, maybe running more. So when you're in a hurry and you're touching your implant, are you doing it like this or are you doing it like this? And so the idea is that uh, all you have to do is just rotate that, that forearm. Okay. So right off the bat, he looks a little more panicked. You're selling the scene better. You're you're acting the act you're asking your actors, the people you've drawn to give you better performances, maybe more more animated performances. And you could disagree with this. You could say, hey, look, these people have seen everything. They live in Metropolis. They've seen, uh, you know, Superman do all sorts of things. They're, they're nonplussed by this, which is fine, but I don't think that's what you're intending. So always think about um, that transition from panel two to panel three and um, having time pass, creating the illusion of time passage by having people's reactions events change okay okay all right 
So, and I don't know if this is Superman. If it's Superman, he's going to react differently than Lois. Okay. So it's just about kind of bending his back a little bit too. Okay. And then for her, she probably would react the same way, which is not to be too crazily worried because she's either with Superman and, and knows that Superman can probably handle it. But just a little more arch in both their backs, right? Okay. And you don't even have to change their, their heads, really. Okay. And just erase a little bit here. That was his waist, but since he's wearing a coat, I believe, you're just gonna see like the fabric bunch up here a little bit. And then maybe you'll see his leg and shadow here. The collar will come up a little further up on his back because he's basically um, tilting his head back against uh, the upper part of his back, so the distance between that part and this part, it's in perspective like that. And if you want to sell it even bit more, you can drop a shadow like this. All right, so like his head is dropping a shadow on his upper back, and then as we get towards the middle back or lower back, it's even more in shadow, and then his butt sticking out here, so it catches a little bit of light. Alright, we can put this in shadow here too. Okay. With a chat room, the ability to share images says hamstrike and different cha channel rooms with an individual server. I think they're talking about the benefits of of uh, of uh, a Discord channel. And Glumen saying, "Got to make them more plus." Am I right? That is correct. That is a correct terminology. Okay. Um, and I like the rendering that you're doing here, Clark. So there's a lot of really positive stuff. I don't mean to dwell on the negative, but I think the hair then would cascade it over the top part of their shoulders, shoulders like that. It has to follow that form. And I love this rendering that you're doing with the hair here as well. Okay. That said, when you get to the other parts of the, the, the drawing, I think you could organize the rendering a little differently. I feel like this guy here... Okay, could be better placed right. Please don't do this to me. There we go. This guy here could actually be better served maybe right here or right here. And the reason why I say that is because if you look at the flow of the, of the storytelling, my eye starts here, panel one, right? There's probably gonna be a word balloon like right here while they're talking. Good morning, Lois. Oh, it's a fine day. Let's go get some brunch. We are people that like to brunch. Yes, you and I. And there she's like, yes, there's a great place around the corner. It's my favorite, Crispy's. It's like, oh my God, I had such bad diarrhea after I ate there. Please, really? And then what the... This is why I don't write comics, guys. This is the, the level of dialogue you would be getting. So... Um, but anyway, so you can see the flow. It's going this way. And 
and you've got this guy over here, so I'm backtracking super fast. I'm backtracking right here, and I don't feel like that's appropriate. The flow would be better going like this, the way you've set it up. And so I want to put this guy right here, because when he says, Krispies is no more, I've destroyed it. And they're all going like, thank God. There we go, thank God, right? I would read that. I would read that, too. <laughs> Got to have a little fun in the morning. All right. So and so some good things happen by making that change, Clark, I think. Because if you put the character here, you can show you've got this. I don't know what this is. I think it's, oh, it's a car. It's a, it's a Metropolis car with a weird wheel. Uh, I don't know if I read it as a car, given like how these um, floating wheel things or whatever. I know you're going up, you're, you're creating this Hawker Harrier type flying car type thing. Um, but again, the way all the um, perspective lines are going on this, I feel like it should be different. Right. They should either be like that and flat to help sell it. They're just at a weird angle. You have them cantered, as they say, right? Like that. And if it's cantered, they're going to be a different... Each of them are going to be a slightly different angle. So it would be like that. No, sorry. This is some high-level perspective. This is like perspective 308. It's cantered, splayed, flying cars. Um, so just the takeaway is that the perspective here is a little off. It can be done. Didn't quite sell it. Um, but putting the, the main villain here in the center is that you've got all your perspective lines working towards that center anyway. It draws the eye, and they're looking here. So everything in the panel would work better if they were... If you move the, the, the villain to the center, uh, as indicated here, um, because over here he's um, he's not the center of focus. In fact, it takes a second to find him. And now with him here, they're looking at him, and the perspective lines are helping us guide our attention to where he is. But then you can also have buildings kind of emanating out if they are truly meant to. I don't know if they're being destroyed or what's happening. I'm not sure exactly what he's doing. Other than, I don't know if that flying car is flying in or whether the villain is making that car ele elevate. There's this electrical effect going on over here, but I don't know what that's doing. It looks like it's transforming the city from a modern building to an ancient building. Is that what's going on? So it's not maybe that he's destroying it, but he's transforming the city from either ancient to modern or modern to ancient. I'm not sure, 100%. So we won't find out till the next panel. Um, but assuming, let's, say, let's just say he is destroying stuff, what you can do, again, is create the passive time in the same panel so that from the center is where the, is sort of the zero point on the timeline. So that's zero, and that's one, two, three. All right, so as we emanate out from that center point, so the Big Bang, you have the big explosions here, but then as you get closer to here, you, you have buildings that aren't affected, but these buildings are affected, right? So by showing the explosion in the center and less of an explosion as it emanates out, um, we're creating that passage of time. It's a sequential thing within each, okay? What's going on? Twatching? Thanks for twatching. That's your experience. Uh, if that's what you kids call it today. Um, best writing quality, 10 to 10. <laughs> Eisner Award winner. Yes. Yeah. And seriously, that is my level of dialogue. So it's pretty sad. Okay. Moving on to panel. Page three. It was a three-page submission. So we'll find out. Normally, I would have loaded up all three, and I would know in advance what I was seeing. 
but because of our technical dis uh, difficulties and rasterization, I was not able to do it. Okay, we have this cool shot of this villain. It's an upshot of the villain. Given the reaction to panel two, I'm pretty sure that's not Clark Kent. Although it could be in that he's really acting for the benefit of the populace that, um, like, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out so that he can run and then turn into Superman, which is a typical Clark Kent move. Um, that tra chain belt does not look functional. Uh, who am I to say what's functional? I, I draw characters with spikes coming out of their, their shoulders. They, they scratch, uh, lift up to get a can of soup. They're putting that spike through their head. So I like panel one. I like uh, the exaggeration. I like the upshot. It's very dramatic. I don't know if I'm sold on the uh, how it's drawn because in panel two or panel... Page two, last panel, he was floating and flying above us. And now it looks like he's maybe standing in front of us. Or maybe he's just, uh, yeah. I mean, you could solve it by, by having one leg more forward, like it's bent, that he's still in that same pose, sort of a continuation pose from the previous page. Uh, or you could have drawn more of the figure in, or maybe this cape could have been fluttering more like that, like he's hovering, uh, as opposed to this kind of uh, cape and the strong wind effect that you have here. It's a minor thing. I like the hand. I like the, I like the foreshortening. It is exaggerated, but I think that's probably your strongest single image. Um, I like the acting, the expression here, her annoyance with him, the, the terror in, uh, in him. But again, his body looks a lot thinner from the previous page, so I think there's inconsistency, not just in terms of proportion and length of arms, but also in the build of the characters. Um, they both look a little more normal height, of more normal height than the uh, first page. And then by the time we get to panel three again, they look elongated. Uh, and we realize, ah, he's not the hero, she's the hero. That is... Uh, bias, unconscious bias, that I assumed that he was always the hero. So look at that. So she's the one that reveals herself to be the hero, flying at the villain who then uh, takes an electrical arc shot at her. She dodges out of the way. The blast hits near the guy who just freaks out. Let me say I love this, but I think I would have foreshortened it a bit more for a little more depth. And by that, I mean taking this, which is in the foreground, okay, and enlarging it um, like that. I feel like it could be that big. Okay, so before, after. Right, so now we've created a little more depth between the, the front part of the figure. You could even go larger, honestly. Right, before, middle, after, right? So you can see. Depends on your, your own taste, how, how, how large, but I would, I would just push it a little bit more than what you had. And that creates a little more depth in the figure. And then you could even done the same thing with this fist in the foreground. If you wanted to, you could even have made this even larger too. Right? So you now have a foreground, foreground fist, middle ground, background, and you've got more depth going on. Okay? Her panel should have been bigger. I, I, I agree with you in that this reveal here is as big an event, as important as that reveal here. So, um, yeah, I think this could have been more dramatic or larger. Uh, but there's a lot going on here. Maybe what you do is you ultimately make the page like that, and make this larger, and then take these two elements that you have here and put them on the next page. But, you know, I'm just assuming that as a storyteller, he felt this was um, what needed to be on this page. What you could have done is taken this, and made it larger like that, okay, and then kind of
and you're like, hey, I thought you said no overlapping, but look, the eye goes one, two, three, the ideas go like that. Having that second panel overlap that third panel in that fashion is a good idea, actually. Okay. With here, I like, there's a little bit of awkwardness in that body language, but, you know, that's a stylistic thing. I will say, though, he looks like he's kind of melting into that wall behind him. Um, and and things should be kind of bursting out. But I feel like he's sinking into the wall just because the way this is drawn here with the blacks over here. So, um, yeah. I think there's issues with kind of things that are happening with this figure, okay? But I would probably rework... Yeah, I would rework it so that you got to draw through and create where's that hip go, where's that knee go. And I know you're doing some sort of really kind of contorted thing to kind of show um, right? But overall, strong um there's a lot of power here. I feel like she's getting kind of very close to the bottom here. It's a weird tangent. You have a lot of negative space up here. Um, why not just, oh, why not put her here? All right, you can still convey it. All right. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's all right. I would maybe just take all this and just move it up a little bit. I mean, you take this entire panel, move it up like that. Yeah, Eddie, one second. Uh, I'm almost done. I've got my assistant here. He's picking up some art. Uh, if any of you guys are in LA, a couple of things before I sign off here. Uh, I will be doing another portfolio review next week, so I'm going to do these more regularly just because I've got a backlog now, so it's cool. Oh, Henry says hello back. That's cool. Hey, Henry. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he, uh, Henry Cavill is giving away, like, I think 30 pieces of original art at Ace Comic Con, and if you follow him on Instagram... He's given clues of where they are around the convention hall. I think there was like one at the security booth uh, at the parking lot, another with um, someone that uh, uh, just other, you know, just random places in, in the convention. It didn't look that hard to find. You just had to be quick and follow his his uh, IG story to, to find him. Um, but I know they're giving away sketches today. And, and then if you get those sketches, you get a coin that you can then go meet him in a private meet and greet um, after his general panel. So anyway, uh, oh, so anyway, Eddie is here to pick up some art. I did the, po there's a, a art gallery called Giant Robot here in LA. And at noon today, they're get, they, they basically do an annual post-it show where different local artists, artists all, all around the world actually submit art on post-it notes. They sell every single post-it note sketch. is $25. You have to just go there and get early in line, and the walls are just covered post-its. It's a pretty cool event, and if you can find really cool post-its, they're super affordable. I've contributed for the past several years, um, so I missed the deadline for last week just because I was traveling on vacation. But I have two images, which I'll share with you once I go into my studio, uh, and Eddie's picking them up to take down to um, the, the gallery. And then I've got this sweatshirt. It says Gary Cooper. For those of you who are old enough to know who Gary Cooper is, this is a sweatshirt uh, owned by a um, uh, boutique, boutique clothing store owned by some friends of ours here uh, in L.A. on Melrose. Um, if you're looking for cool Christmas gifts for lady friends, guy friends, they have some amazing shoes, uh, heels, <laughs> comfortable heels. I'm only assuming they're comfortable. That's what my wife tells me. Um, but they're really cool people, and uh, you know, if you're if you're looking to support a local business, go check that out. I'll be right back with the post and notes. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll be right back.
All right, the next stream, Crispy, is tomorrow from 10 to noon. All right, so I did two on, on blue. This year I decided, I think I've done like DC characters or mainstream DCU characters. So this year I did a grifter. Let's see if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can get that a little closer. Let's see. There's a delay, so I... All right, let's see if that... That's way cooler than I thought it would be. What's that? What kind of compliment is that? <laughs> so that's Grifter. That's like, that's not as sucky as I thought it would be. All right, and then this is, uh, this is Zealot. It's a crispy compliment. I'll take a photo and put it on Instagram. But they're like a little pair. I even did some lettering, which I never do. All right, so thank you guys for tuning in. It is 11.13. Uh, I will be here tomorrow. Thank you, uh, Clark Prince, for the submission. There are two other pages he submitted, like I said, that were, I thought, an improvement over the first three that he sent um, a while ago. And so I'll show them and talk about them briefly at the next Art, Porf Art Portfolio Review, which I'll do, which i do this, this uh, Saturday. All right, so thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Kate, for modding while you're in line to meet Henry Cavill. That shows true dedication. Thank you, Renee, also for modding and the rest of you guys for tuning in. Appreciate it. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.